Um, we are we are starting five days of looking at the areas of our lives that we need to make a U-turn in. You guys, have you guys identified any of those? If you're just jumping on, say hello, say hello, say hello. Okay, so Rex and I were just talking about this. We were talking about, first of all, how how there are areas and gaps in all of our lives that we know we need to make a change. Okay, so I know this is really vulnerable. And if you have somebody watching that maybe you don't want to expose this, then don't answer this question. But if you want to be bold and you want to see a miracle come through, who wants to see a miracle come through? Put me in the comment section. Who's ready for a miracle? Put me in the comment section. I see me's starting to pop up. Yes. Okay, so part of creating a miracle in your life is expecting it. This was a big aha for me. There's trying to will your way to it, trying to positive think your way to it, but then there's a click that happens. And when that click happens, it's like you expect for things to work out. True story, my husband and I this morning were in our bathroom getting ready and we were having a husband wife conversation. And we were talking about how when we go back to Puerto Rico, we are still in the search of the home that we want to buy. How many of you guys are going to buy a new home this year? Put H in the comment section for home. How many of you guys are clear you're going to buy a new home? If you're not clear you're going to buy a new home, you need to readjust your thinking and expect an even bigger miracle because one of the things you should be looking at doing cash wise this year is being able to get into the real estate game because the market is on a reset. Okay, and so you should actually have that if you care about money, you should be thinking about getting cash. And if you don't have cash and you're meant to be live, if you're somebody who's in meant to be live, one of our programs, put MML in the comment section. You guys, I'm going to show you at your mastermind in a couple of weeks how to find other people's money and not use your money to be able to get into the real estate game. Who's excited about that? You should be putting yes. Okay, so our mindset can think. I need to go to the banks to get the money. Now I got good credit or bad credit. And so we feel like we're in a box and we're limited. But the truth is, is that somebody knows. I want everybody to write down, somebody knows. Somebody knows how to solve your relationship challenges. Somebody knows how to get over infidelity in a relationship. Somebody knows how to find more money. Somebody knows how to buy real estate without the bank. Somebody knows how to help me become a millionaire this year or even create a million dollar month. Somebody knows. See, I have bulging discs in my back and I was told that I wouldn't be able to run, cycle or any of that. Here's the MRI, here's the MRI. And the MRI says that you're kind of screwed, Shanda. It says that you absolutely are not gonna be able to run or bike or anything like that. Now, you can't see my full body, but look at this. I got no issues in my back and I still have bulging discs and had a sciatica, right? Where it's like, that's what I hear. Oh, but no, it's all the way, yeah. Somebody knows that somebody knows how me with something called knowledge therapy and my back release. So my husband and I are in a moment and I, this is what I want to set the context, expect a miracle. We get in it. We got uh, an agent in Puerto Rico. Who's amazing. His name's Chris. Never met him. That's the coolest thing about the internet these days. Never met him, but he's ambitious. Okay. He's ambitious. And so he's sending us houses and there's this house that's big it's beautiful but we hate the floors we hate the floors right and my husband hates the spanish tile like it's like nails on a chalkboard to him to see the spanish i actually like the spanish tiles he hates them the floors are all spanish tiles and so so i i'm thinking to myself you know what we got two dogs they're big dogs it'd be easier to just have their the owners will let us have our dogs and the house satisfies, checks almost all of our boxes, almost all of our boxes. Some of you guys are in a relationship right now with someone who checks almost all of your boxes. Right? Think about this. You, you cannot settle anymore. We're in a world of AI that will take out jobs, whether you like it or not. You can put your head in the sand and pretend like it's not going to happen. Or you can realize that it's vision that a computer cannot out take out. It's not human. It's vision. This is why leadership is so important. See, the computers pull the assets of what we put on the web, everything we've spoken, everything we've thought, but then there's what we haven't thought yet. I call that God, right? There's something that we haven't thought yet, and that's vision, right? The scriptures say that my people will perish without a vision. 
I will tell you, some of you guys don't have a sense of urgency in your life because of a lack of vision. There's nothing wrong with you. Vision can actually be taught. When, when Rex talks today, you're going to get a new vision for yourself. Okay, so I want you to write down the word vision. Do not go to bed without a new vision tonight. Okay, I, you got to follow the coaching for this to work. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my husband and I, our bathroom husband and wife talk. So I'm thinking the house would be fine. The house is fine. How many of you guys are saying this somewhere in your life right now? This is fine. My, my program and business is fine. My business, my, my cash flow is fine. I, my house is fine. My relationship is fine. If it's fine, you're out. You're going out of business. Like that's where it's going off the cliff in the wrong direction. You better course correct that and have more urgency right now. So the flip is, is I heard myself saying, Ash, it would be easy. Why don't we just get to Dorado Beach, go into that house. It would be easy. We get to bring our dogs. The house is fine. Right. And then we'll be able to find our forever home. And then my husband looked at me and said, if we start settling for fine, we're going to keep getting what we've always got. Right. We got to set our expectations, our standards higher. How many of you guys need to set your expectations or your standards higher? Right. Put me in the comment section. And here's the deal. I'm going to give out cash cards for tags and shares today. Some of you guys are gonna get 50, 100, $25, $500 cash cards because I see you thinking about people in your life that you care about that need to be on this live right now. If you're in a Facebook group, obviously you can't, ta you can't tag somebody in, but you could absolutely bring them into the group, tag them on the bottom and I'll see that you care about someone. But if you're on social right now somewhere, you can go ahead and you can tag and share this and we will be looking, we will be looking to cash inject you all week. Some of you guys are gonna win trips to Hawaii. Some of you guys are gonna win trips to Mexico. Some of you guys are gonna win cash, but just for tagging and sharing, we're, we have a team of people watching all of our platforms to see if you care enough about somebody other than yourself to succeed. And we're gonna be giving out cash cards. You guys get that? So I, I'm looking for tags and shares today. So Ash said, if we, if we set our standards higher, we'll start to say the truth is, the truth is there's three homes in Dorado Beach that are our homes. We have our choice. There's three homes in Dorado Beach. There's not just one kind of house that we could rent in the meanwhile. There's three homes in Dorado Beach right now. You see what you say matters because you start to convince yourself that that's truth. When you start to convince yourself that it's truth up here, the miracle comes in. Rex Crane is going to speak to you today. He always says your miracles in motion, your miracles in motion, right? He's prophetic. He's a, he's a gift from God in all honesty. But when he speaks, I go to work immediately after I listen to him speak. So know that I'll set up some homework when he's done speaking that will move your miracle in motion for you so that you can get the results that you want. But I want you to intend this week that you're with us for five days. It's perfect timing. It's perfect timing in the world right now because we're in the first quarter of the year, second month. Do you know when we're done this week? When we're done this week, we'll be halfway through the first quarter. I'm trying to inject some urgency in your life. I'm trying to get you to raise your standards because if you do, you're going to see the miracle, not just in motion, but you're going to see it manifest. You guys ready for that? Yes. Okay, so tag and share, tag and share, tag and share. Um, you guys who are watching, other than our VIP inner circles, so you guys, there's an inner circle group that we're together with. There's, um, it's so funny, there's always 50% show up. Always 50% show up. Okay, so 50% of the people who paid to be an inner circle, you guys in, 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 uh, in inner circle, you guys who showed up, 50% always show up. It's like clockwork. We better get the urgency going. We better get the urgency going, right? I don't miss masterminds. I don't miss talks. I do things that are uncomfortable. I just flew. How many of you guys saw me on Grant Cardone? Put GC, GC, who saw me on Grant Cardone's challenge last week. I flew 10 hours, five hours there, five hours back for a 25 minute speaking gig. Right? Like you got to get uncomfortable to be able to put yourself in the proximity of the miracle that you want. Okay. Last thing I'm going to say on the groups, there is a Facebook group. Okay. If you're not, who's not in the Facebook group, put no, 
Put no in the comment section if you are not in our Coach Yourself to Success Facebook group. Okay, so you're gonna miss out on miracles of cash. Tomorrow I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you about how do you break the cycles of cash flow? Rex told me the other day, he said, there's a bunch of people right now in a season of advancement, a season of next level, a season of leading AI, not being taken out by AI, right? There's this season, but some people are going to miss it because of cycles in your life that are going to cancel out those miracles. You know who I'm talking to. You got it. You got a little bit of that fear inside you when I say it, because there's a grip on your soul that needs to be released. Do you hear what I'm saying? And so we're gonna release that grip. Rex is gonna prime you in a couple seconds. Tomorrow I'm gonna to, I'm gonna unleash the cycles and break them around money flow. And then we're gonna take you to the elevation level halfway through this week. If you miss any of this and you're not in the Facebook group, then guess what? We can't bless you because we can't feed into you. Okay, so in the in the descriptions on YouTube, Facebook, everywhere we're streaming right now, it's got the Facebook group. Suzanne, make sure we got it in the inner circle right here on Zoom, but it's in the description. I recommend before you forget, you click on that and you join the Facebook group, or you screenshot it and put it on a Word doc, or write yourself a note, join the Facebook group, because if you don't, we can't help you. You're only going to get the, the voice from us. You're not going to get the integration in the Facebook group, okay? All right. So I'm going to bring you up, Rex, before I do, I want everybody to get really clear what's moving this week. What's going to move inside you? What needs to move? Where's an area of your life? Is it in your relationship? I want you to put this in the comments. Is it in your love life? Is it in your family life? Is it in your parenting? Is it in your money? Where do you need to raise your standard the most? Where do you need to raise your standard the most? You fix, you fix one area of your life and it dominoes. Where is the area that's sucking most of your energy away? Is it in your love life? Is it in your parenting? Is it in your health? Is it in your spiritual connection with God? That's like my number one thing, right? When everything falls apart, something's happening here, right? Is it in your marriage? Where is it? Go in the comment section, let us know, because that's where Rex and I are going to look when we're done with the live so that we can see where is the pattern right now in the world that we need to break the most. Where is the spiritual attack happening right now that needs to be broken and moved off your life? All right, you guys, let's get ready. Rex Craig! Yeah, baby, let's go. Let's go. Come on. Oh, my goodness. Awesome. You guys are in great hands. So much love for you. I'll be back when he's done. Yo. Welcome today to, come on, you turn. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for the privilege of joining you and being part of your host today. Can we give it up for a minute just for Shanda Sumter? Right in the chat, what an absolute reward and a gift she is. You know, uh, speaking for the last 25 years and being a part of millions of people's journeys all throughout the world, been in 48 countries, spoken to governments, to the, you know, absolute abject poverty of India and Africa. You come across people that are equipped, that are empowered with tools to not just make money and build a great business and a life, but are empowered and infused by God with tools and insights to be deliverers in their life. I've seen that happen where people that are relationship deliverers or that'll help people's relationship turn around in a moment. Shanda is truly a financial deliverer. She knows how to take an idea and turn it from intention into great inception to where something is be able to go beyond the drawing board of your mind and be able to put a framework around it, a structure around it. So it begins to produce cash flow increase in your life over and over. People that are making five figure, maybe business, six figure business, even up to seven and eight figure business. I've watched her come in different stages and begin to immediately inject insight and strategy that has allowed business businesses either in their infancy or at a place of maybe they're doing great or stagnation begin to scale again begin to move again how many know the only thing that's bred in stagnant waters are mosquitoes they are the biggest killer in the world not not covid it's mosquitoes but they're bred in stagnant waters and each of us can form and find at times we can become stagnant areas that matter most 
And this is an area in your life that you don't want to miss tomorrow's segment because uh, this is going to be powerful for you to not only gate the mindset, but the mechanics and how to turn an idea into something profitable and find avenues of revenue that are going to allow you this year to create your own economy so you don't have to depend upon your prime minister, your president, the leaders of your country. Because I think something we've all learned over the last three years is our life is way too precious to place in the hands of other people deciding for us how we are going to live, our health care, our mindset. I think we've all come to some new realities that, man, I can't allow myself or allow to afford my family to just trust a political leader, to trust a health care system that's committed to us failing. No, no, no. I need to take back power and control of my life. Just in the chat, if you feel this is a real moment for you to reclaim the driver's seat of your life, come on. They, they just write that this is a time for me. This is very, very important to me at this time. You came to U-Turn today for a reason. My belief is there's something in your life that you want to transform. You want to turn around. Maybe you've had a setback in your health. Maybe your kids are having a really tough time and you're in a challenging season. Maybe economically you are doing great and all of a sudden over the COVID time, all of a sudden your business, your profitability has tanked and you're on a decline and you're looking for a way to turn something around. You're going to find the insights. You're going to find the mindset and the tools here to make a big shift. But others of you, you're doing okay, and you're looking to turn what you have and to turn it into greater profitability, greater production, and greater performance. I know there's two lives that you have. There's a life that you currently have right now, the life that you currently live in, but there's also the life that you're capable of living. I, my, 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 I think my understanding would tell you there's probably quite a big gap from the one that we're currently living relationally, emotionally, financially, spiritually, to the life that's available and the life that's possible to us. For that to become a reality, I know we're gonna have to pivot. We're gonna have to change. We're gonna have to reposition ourselves. So over the next five days, I, my, my challenge to you is that you'll not dabble with this. A lot of people dabble with change. They dabble with taking, turning around, having comebacks. And you dabble with it and you flirt with it and flirt as long as it's comfortable. My challenge to you is that you would make a commitment to be present, to show up, to not just watch, but participate. That means even writing notes. If you write notes, 38% of what you hear, you'll absolutely absorb in three weeks. So then you won't waste your time. If you interact and you engage and do the homework, you'll retain 92%. How we know it's not the, just the knowledge and the insight we hear, but stuff that we're willing to maximize and add faith to and mix it with work that's able to profit you and take your life, your business to the next level. I've had the incredible privilege for 25 years to do this. And for the last three years, specifically with some incredible companies, uh, right at COVID, you know, at the onset, I coach a company that does about $2 billion in profits, right underneath $2 billion. And we were immediately compressed with all kinds of ideas where we were by the fear that was going on in the world to contract, to hold back, to hold back our innovation, to hold back ideas and strategies. And in conversations, I started talking to these people and they said, you know what? This is going to be our greatest opportunity because when other people are thinking about contraction and they're in reactive mode, I suggested, why don't we pivot and in a conversation, I said, let's get into creative mode. Let's get into a way to be able to maximize resources, stabilize what we have, and innovate in the process of challenging times. Because in challenging times, fear restricts people. Fear begins to paralyze people's movement, sterilizes their soul, and it polarizes people from their health. That's why a community is so powerful because you actually regain health better when you're in a community. You think better in a community. You beat depression better in a community. Your profits are over 23% better when you're in a community of people that are doing life together. Come on, give it up for our community here at U-Turn. Come on, write that in the thing and be present because you could help somebody else out over the next five days, but it's a powerful thing. We started to talk about this conversation in this company and we said, what if everybody else is looking at, we're in a freeze mode, what if we look at how we can use the season and the opportunity not to stay in the same cycle as everybody else? Because seasons change in time, cycles change when you break them. That's what I'm gonna say this today and we're gonna get into this a little bit this week. There's a season of great opportunity to forward ideas in your mind, business solutions in your mind, forward your family in this time. But many people will miss the season because they're stuck in cycles. 
soul cycles where there are forward people, but they're stuck on backward thoughts. Their mind rejects what their spirit wants to happen. Come on. And there's an inner civil war going on on the inside of people where all of a sudden they, they're fluctuating between hope and despair, hope and despair, hope and despair. And if you look at our world, according to Harvard, right now, 73% of people believe they're powerless to change their future, to change their economic. They feel that they're at the mercy of the government, the mercy of the environment, the mercy of 8.2 inflation, which is how we all know it's a little bit of a lie. It's way over 10% right now. And it's easy to sit back and settle and just wish it would go away. Man, I just wish it would go away. Or maybe we just root for someone to be a deliverer. But maybe our own strength is at the power of your own hand. And it's in these challenging times where I know something really powerful. God raises up people to think differently. If God's going to change your world, he's got to change the way you think about yourself, what you have, the opportunities that are in front of you, and the ability you've had to succeed before. How many of you had a big U-turn in your life at one point in your life? In fact, just for a minute, just write down in the chat, what is a U-turn that you had? Maybe you were addicted to uh, smoking. Maybe you were addicted to drugs. Maybe you had a U-turn where you went through a divorce, but you bounced back. Maybe you went through a U-turn where, man, you had to file bankruptcy, but you bounced back. And why am you bringing these things up? Because every one of us has had a point, a moment in our life where something had to shift. Not we wanted to shift, but something had to shift. I love what Jim Rohn, the late teacher, said. There's a difference in your life between your shoulds and your must. A should is, I'd like it to happen. I wish it would happen. I hope it happens. But a must is, I'm going to change the energy. I'm going to change the emotion. I'm going to change the engagement. It has to happen. You get your must because you make a way or you find a way. The proverb says, the hand of the diligent shall be made rich. What if this is a season to become so much more determined, deliberate, and direct in what you do and committed to the outcomes that I'm going to create in this season and not be reactive, but I'm going to be creative. With the company I told you about, we began to pivot and look at this as an opportunity. We began to stabilize things in our life, stabilize things within the company, assets we had, resources we had, because it's easy in challenging seasons to start looking at what you don't have. I don't have this. I don't have that. If you begin to look at what you don't have, you become paralyzed by it. That fear starts to take over your life. I want to put you back in. You have everything you need today to create a meaningful future. Let me say that again. You have everything you need today to create a meaningful future. There is a miracle, as Shanda said, a motion over your life because God's best performance is not in your history. It's in your destiny. It's in what's in front of you. That demands something, though, of you. Just as this company, I don't need to be reactive in this season, waiting for the time to change. You're in about a six, seven year window where we are in a challenging season in the world. Most of us have not been through these seasons because we weren't alive long enough to go through them. But now we are in this season and you can watch, you can watch, you can wait, you can wish, or you can go to work on yourself. You go to work on things. The desire, the dream of a person that doesn't have any work ethic, it comes to nothing. I remember watching American Idol one time and Simon, uh, after somebody had performed, she said, please vote me in. It's my dream. It's my dream. It's my desire. And he said, so? How much time have you put in? Are you invested in it or are you interested in it? Would you like it to shift or have you really challenged this and developed it and curated it and crafted it? And she says, no, I haven't put that much time in. He says, and you can go ahead and get off my stage. How many know life rewards people that are invested in when their time, their talent, energy, and they're not just, hey, I'm interested and I like it. That's reactive people. Even Stanford said there's two business mindsets that hold people back the most, the chicken and the jerk. The jerk says, I don't want to. Why does it have to be this way? That's where a lot of us are in the world right now. Why are these people in power? Why are they hurting us financially? Why did COVID happen? But then there's also the, the, the chicken. They're like, well, I'm scared to try. I'm scared what if. I, I'm scared what if I fail because I failed maybe in the past or I didn't follow through on a commitment and I'm scared I'll let myself down again. This U-turn is going to allow you to turn that failure of the past into fertilizer that's going to allow you to get beyond your fears and step into a powerful place of faith where you have joy again, you got energy again, where you can feel your life again. You can feel momentum in your life. Think about it as a kid, you had so much momentum. Come on, your life was all about momentum. Climbing trees, chasing the ice cream truck, even if you didn't have any money. Come on, somebody. 
by faith you were going to get a big stick i don't know about you we didn't have a lot of money we was po we just did not know it come on we i remember we would chase the ice cream truck come on we had cheetos on the side of our face and by faith we were going to get a big stick our life was about momentum when you feel that way you feel alive and you risk more you give more you love more if you're reactive in this season you'll lose you'll get pain you'll get more misery because you're going to wait for something or someone to meet your need uh, to handle it all for you. You can get into, though, a different place, reactive or creative. It's actually the same letters. The only difference is the sequence, sequence of where you put the C. That's powerful for a minute. Reactive or creative. The only difference is where you put the C. The C stands for choice. Come on. It stands for the ability to choose your decisions, not the conditions of your life, not the challenges of your life. Your choices, not challenges, determine how your future is going to end out, how this year is going to work for you. You're economic. I want you to remember you have the ability to make new decisions. Anytime you make a new decision, something changes. Something changes. You could change your relationships. You could change your, you could change your body with one committed decision. You can change the quality of your joy with one decision. You can decide right now and make a new decision, even if you wanted to, just to use all 82 muscles in your face and smile. In fact, if you know that if you would just smile for five minutes a day, that neurologically you'd open neurons that aren't firing, you would release dopamine in your brain that would reduce the stress cortisol level that actually causes distress, anxiety, panic attacks, and depression. And you'll actually stir your metabolism just by smiling five minutes a day and you'll burn freaking fat while you feel good. Wouldn't that be just a great decision that could change your life today? Come on, somebody. And plus you would throw everybody off. Just walk around your neighborhood, walk to the Starbucks, walk to the coffee shop, walk into a restaurant and just smile. What happens? You just throw everybody. How many know just one little decision like that could change your whole entire life? I found that there's three decisions that if you're willing to start to master them at this season of your life, you will find new momentum, you will find new strength, and you'll find yourself leading your life, not leasing your life. Not living reactive to other things, determining who you become, what you achieve, what you create, but three decisions that will allow you to maximize. Before I go there, do you remember where you were three years ago when you heard about COVID hitting? For me, I was in Miami Beach and I just got done speaking and there were thousands of people all over the beach. They could care less if there was COVID or not in the world. I remember when I was, when I heard about it, that the world might be shutting down and everyone was starting to get nervous and afraid and I had to go get on an airplane. I remember what I was. Do you remember maybe three years ago before COVID, what were your dreams? What were you like? What kind of person were you? If somebody would have told you, you know, hey, where would you be in three years? What would you have told them? Where would, you, what would you have told them like, hey, in 2023, this is where I'd be. Maybe a better question is, are you today where you wanted to be back then? Maybe even a greater question would be, where are you gonna be in the next three years? Because the reality is you're going to arrive. You are going to get there. The question is who are you gonna become? What will you give? What will you contribute? What will you share? I know your life's way too valuable to allow other people to decide that. So I wanna help you today because the Bible says that you can choose life or you can choose death. You could choose blessing or you could choose defeat. I wanna help you break out of a spirit of defeat, maybe a rut internally, and make three new decisions that are going to allow you to begin to move into 2023, this first quarter, with greater clarity, come on, greater passion, greater energy, that's gonna allow the dreamer in you to live, the lover in you to live, the leader in you to emerge, and the believer again to make it all work and come together. Here's the three decisions that I want you to begin to go to work here for a minute. The number one decision that we're gonna to make today is, what will I create? Ooh, this is a question of vision. Come on, you need to write, my vision is my future. Write that down. My vision is my future. I found that without a vision, we atrophy, we become bored. We start to do things that maybe are uncharacteristic of our character, not because we're bad people, just because we don't have something to reach for. If we don't have something to reach for, we always, come on, die by what's behind us. I like to say, it. if I don't have something to reach for what's before me, I always die by what's behind me. Without a vision, we kind of wonder and wander. 
We flirt with things. We try this. We try a relationship. We try this health method. We try this business idea. Aren't you tired in your own life? Because I know I get that way where I don't want to try anymore. I want to make a decision of what I'm going to be committed to. But to do that, I need to have a, a vision. So much of our vision and our focus is about trying to avoid pain, not get hurt, not fail, all these different ideas. And if vision becomes about that, you move in the direction of that. If that is your vision, what kind of emotional life do you experience? One of fear, one of sadness, one of regret. The great Tom Brady, who just uh, retired last week, I was with him back a couple months ago in Tampa. And I'm thinking here at 27 years old, this is over 20 years ago, almost 20 years ago, he hurt his elbow really, really bad. And he was thinking about the pain is so bad, I think I'm going to retire because I don't want to deal with the pain. But he had somebody that came into his corner as a corner man said, don't let the temporary pain talk you out of what could be a great career. He had no idea he would become the GOAT, the greatest player in the NFL history. He had no idea that he'd have this illustrious career where he would be loved and adored and honored by many. He's got $360 million uh uh, a speaking gig now on Fox available to him if he wants to. All because he didn't stop there. He began to shift his focus from the pain he experienced and was experienced to having a new vision for what he wanted to create. I want to go there for a minute. Helen Keller said, what's worse than being born blind? Having sight with no vision. Oh. Let me say that again. What's worse than being born blind? Having sight with no vision. I know one thing's true. You make the vision and the vision makes you. The scripture says the mind of a person plans their way. Then God directs their steps. Could God be waiting on you to come up with an idea that this is the area I want to move into? Because he doesn't violate your will. Maybe you're frustrated that God hasn't given you the great dream. Maybe he's waiting for you to begin to think of what do I want to create with my life? What do I want to create relationally? Do I want to create a, a, a passionate relationship with someone that is committed to giving, contributing, sharing, having a liveness in there? Maybe you're committed to really building a business, scaling a business, making six or a seven figure bump in your life this year. Why not? Someone's going to do it. Why don't you let it be you? Maybe you're committed to taking back your health and not come on where you have more energy, you have more strength because you're going to need it. If you have all your dreams come true and you don't have the health to enjoy it, the peace of mind to enjoy it, come on, life's not going to be great for you, even if you got the money. Some of you are really going to start thinking, what do I want to create? In the chat, I want you to begin to write, what do I want to create right now? What am I committed to creating? What am I committed to creating physically? What am I committed to creating? Come on, your body's a temple. God lives in your temple. Take care of your temple. Nurture it. Nourish it. Come on, what am I committed to creating in my relationships? Is it closeness? Is it distance? Is it, uh, hey, I'll, I'll like you if you like me first? What am I committed to creating in my relationships? What am I committed to creating in my finances? Am I created, committed to creating an, uh, as an entrepreneur an idea, a business idea? Am I committed to rising in the company that I'm in and becoming more valuable so that I can watch, make more money? Come on, because how many know that money follows value? It travels at value and it travels at the speed of vision. Why? Because when you make the vision, the vision begins to make you. Oh, I love this. I started thinking about a guy I coached some years ago, Ken Norton Sr. He knocked out Muhammad Ali, broke his jaw in half. After the meeting was over, he came and I go, man, I'm so, so thankful that you come. He goes, hey, you fire me up, Rex Crane. He goes, I feel like you're a brother. He goes, I know you're white, a little bit pink, but he goes, you're like a brother. He goes, you feel, you got soul food. I go, you ain't teasing. I go, let's have a conversation. I knew all these people were in line to get his autograph. And so I said, I asked him, asked him a question so everybody could hear. I said, Ken, how in the world did you get to a place coming from abject poverty and just a place of anger where that was the focus and bitterness and resentment? How did you go from a place to that to getting the place to where you just knocked out Muhammad Ali and broke his jaw in half. He goes, Rex Crane, let me tell you a thing. I go, tell me a thing, Ken. He goes, I grew up po. And I go, okay. He goes, economically, we was po. So I learned to think poor. I learned to see myself through scarcity, lack. 
He said, I realized if I wanted to be a champion in life and have greatness in my life, I had to shift the way I had vision of myself and what I was capable of. He said, I began to read Think Rich and Grow Rich. He said, I read it over 300 times in a year with the miracles of the Bible. He said, I wanted to put a new thought process in me so it would change what I'm seeing because how many know it's true? You move toward what you envision. If you envision, I'll probably get sick this year. I probably won't have a great passionate relationship. I maybe won't go on a great vacation. This probably won't work for me. How do we know you're going to move toward what you see in your life, good or bad? Wouldn't it be great to decide what you're going to move toward? He said, I began to shift my vision. And when I did, I said, he said, I began to feel like poverty began to leak out of me, but abundance began to get back in on the inside of me. Come on, as a kid, don't you remember? We didn't have any limitations. The fears that we only feared was loud noises and falling. You weren't afraid of not being taken care of as a little kid. We thought of abundance. We could have it all. We didn't know if we were poor. You just thought you could have it all because abundance was in us as kids. He said, I needed to get back to that place where I had a vision of abundance in my life. Not just what I wanted to get, but who I could be in my world. How I could change my world. How I could show up strong in my world. He said, I began to get that inside me. And he said, I got to the place where I started to see myself and have a vision of myself as a champion. He said, that changed the way I train. It changed who I brought into my life. It changed who I allowed to be close to me. He said, that vision began to make me. It became like a sword. It began to weed out and cut away things that no longer had virtue, that no longer had value, that no longer had power in my life. And he said, when I did, I slimmed down. I started cutting weight. See, many of you are going to get a new vision over these next couple days. You're going to have a new game plan to live out that vision with power and efficiency. Not pop psychology, not something trendy, not success motivation. We all know it's bullshit. Every one of us, come on, every one of us knows, and there's a million people online, here's my one trick, and you haven't built freaking nothing. How many know that's all BS? I want to build my life on something timeless, steady, that in shaky times, I can be, I can be strong, I can be steady, because stability releases ability. Stability releases ability. This is something I know about. I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to fix your car. I don't know how to be, do dental work. I know something about vision and making it, creating it to where it works in you, to where you live it on your good days and your bad days. When you feel great and you feel like hell, but that vision pulls you into tomorrow. It pulls you out of chapter six. It pulls you out of a place where you've been depleted and it pulls you into a place of strength. The question is, what will you create? When you have a vision, it does something. It brings meaning and hope to your life. You need hope right now. They took a, I use this analogy because they did it at Harvard. They took a tub of water and they put a rat in it and they wanted to see how long it would swim in complete darkness before it succumbed to its surroundings. It lasted three minutes and 19 seconds. It died. They took the dead rat out. They put a living rat in that same water. This time they cracked a little bit of a hole where light could shine into that same water. Their only difference was little light in this time versus complete darkness for the other rat. This rat lasted 37 hours and 19 minutes, over 500 times longer. How many know when you have a vision, you feel like things are going to change? You have a motivation. You have a confidence. You keep showing up. Hope begins to stabilize your soul so you don't become so vacillated. Come on, watch how powerful. But it does something. Vision simplifies your life. It shows you what to eliminate. Some of you in this week, you're going to start eliminating. There's things in your soul. There's patterns of acting. There's patterns and things that you do and say that work against you. We're going to find tools this week to break these patterns to get you free. Because when you have a vision, start simplifying. Determines what you do and what you don't do. What you say yes to and what you say no to. When you're committed to living in a place and have a vision for health, I'm going to eat for fuel, not eat for pleasure and feeling. Come on, somebody. If I have a relationship for intimacy, I'm not going to want to and have I'm not going to want to look around at other things because I want to be intimate. I want to share my source, my life, my soul with somebody. I want to find a way to light them, to lift them and take them to places. That's what I'm committed to when I have a vision of that. 
have a vision for my finances, that I want a business, I'm not going to get into a place where I'm emotionally spending all the time, investing in things that don't appreciate, especially in this in this economy right now, where cash flow is king. And you're going to learn a little bit about this this week with a financial deliver in Shanda. But this is a time to, if you have a vision for a business or an economic stream that you want to create, or we to maximize it with real estate, this is an incredible season coming up in these next couple of years, where if you have cash on hand, you're going to be able to do some incredible things. You won't want to waste it on things that aren't going to profit you. The scripture says all things are beneficial, not all things profit you. Mary and Martha were both with Jesus, the master of life, and Martha was distracted with too much busyness. But Mary sat in a place where she was able to get insight, revelation, and God said the thing she chose would reward her. How many know when you make new decisions based on vision of what's most valuable in your life and you sense what's valuable, it begins to reward you. Finally, vision, it does something for you. It focuses you. It concentrates your energy and your effort on what matters the most. Don't be like a shotgun where you get excited for a minute, you get motivated for a minute. And life's going to change like a shotgun that has 100 pellets and it shoots in a million directions. But after a couple of feet, dies out. They lose their power. 20 feet away, they can bounce off your arm. A rifle is a little quieter, but it has to lock onto a destination. You just can't shoot at whatever. Locks onto a destination and it hits its, pat, it hits its target at a high velocity, high impact, up to a mile, up to two miles away in some instances. Wouldn't that be better to be your own life? I told my story where I went to Bruce Lee's school and I was in a kickboxing class and a young woman walked up to me and all the other men trainers were already fighting people. She said, hey, I'll box with you. And I'm like, ah, oh, no, 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 no. Because I thought in my mind, oh my gosh, I'll, if I hit her, I'm going to knock her over. She's about five feet tall and maybe 90 pounds. If that, I'm thinking, okay, I'm 175 pounds, five foot, 11 and a half. If I hit you, I'm going to knock you out. And so I was in a little bit of bravado and she says, come on, just hit me. And she had these pads on her hand. I'm like, nah, 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 it's okay. She goes, hit me, you wuss. She challenged my manhood. <laughs> I go, okay. So I'm going to hit her pad, just kind of shut her up. I hit the pad. And when I went to go hit the pad, I used all my energy out here. And she went, boom, boom, popped me right in the face. And I'm like, oh, shoot. So I thought I'd be quick and go like this, this. And she went, pop, pop me again. She says, let me stop you there for a minute, Mr. Crane. I go, what? She says, that's what most people do in their life. They start swinging at so many different things. They don't have nothing to connect with. And as a result, they expend their energy way out here on stuff that doesn't matter. You're most powerful when you're ready to connect with something right in front of you, not to the side of you or behind you. Where are you fitting, spending so much time in your vision beside you, behind you? What do I want to create? This will simplify your life. This will focus your life. Number two is this. What do I want to cure? What do I want to care for? Why do you say that question? Because that's a sign of your calling that you need to have vision for. Why? Because the problem that most infuriates you, that draws the compassion out of you, I want you to recognize for a moment, you are created and qualified to bring healing, contribution, and cure to the situation. I hated watching children suffer. I remember being a professional athlete and I would read the scriptures and I would feel compassion when I would walk in different places and see kids struggling in their health, kids struggling mentally with disabilities. I hated it. It wasn't like something like, oh, that sucks. It was like something that pulled my heart. I said, I want to make a difference here. I want to change this. And I began to pray. I began to have a vision like, God, I want to do something about this. I just don't want to watch people in pain. I want to bring healing to this area. And why do you say that? Because when you have a vision for not just what I want to create, but what I want to cure or care for, let's use that word, what I want to care for or cause or bring hope to, maybe healing to, that's a better word, what hurt I want to heal, maybe not just cure, that all of a sudden life takes on significance where I am, where, man, I can do something about that right now. I remember starting to look for different ways to serve kids, and I found myself not too long after I made that decision, I want to do something about this. I'm not going to watch it in pain anymore. I don't care what other people say I have a vision to make a difference to be heroic in this area. It's something that stirs my soul. I got a vision for it. I went to Africa and I was sitting there and they brought to me, we actually, we, we found this whole group of people, uh, kids that lived in the dump. We took them out of the dump, put them in a hotel, bought them a home, did all kinds of stuff when we were there. That was fantastic. But there was a little guy and he was four years of age. His name was Boniface. Beautiful, beautiful young man. 
and he did not walk or he did not talk. He was body riddled with AIDS. Mom and dad died of AIDS. Grandparents died of AIDS. And I sat there and I, when I, that boy, I said, just put him in. I, I just wanted to hold that little kid, do whatever I could to give, try to give a kid gummy bears, anything I could, right? To be able to be cool to that kid. But I was speaking in a place and I remember there's thousands of people where I was speaking and I said, bring me that young boy, bring me that young boy. And he was there and I'm like, I, I held him. And when I did and brought him close, he put his hands on my mouth and started, you know, like that, like as a little kid would do to a parent. And I started doing that. And I heard over the whole entire audience, oh, I can't believe you were, oh, Rex, you need to put him down. And I didn't know what they were meant. But what happens is there was a stigma that, that believed that if you help somebody or touch somebody or embrace somebody with that, with AIDS, full bone AIDS, that you could get it. You diminish yourself, your identity, where on my identity was, Hey, this is a vision I have to bring cure, to bring hope, to bring healing to something, to bring change to something. There's so much value packed inside that little guy and you're disqualifying him based on something that was a mess. But this pain was moving compassion out of me. I held that little boy in front of those thousands of people and I sat there and go, God, I said, I would rather go to heaven and that little boy live. Give that little boy his life back. Take the AIDS out of his body. Take the AIDS somehow, some way. I know there's four different drugs that, that treat AIDS and HIV, but this has to be something bigger because they can't cure it. They can only cover up and hinder some of the effects of it. I need to, you do something special. And I remember crying like a baby that day for all those thousands of people. Can I tell you, we went back and did an interview. And today that boy, this is now about 12 years later, that boy is now 16 years of age. He runs, he walks, he talks. There's not one trace from that mo from a month after, not one trace of AIDS or HIV in that little boy's body. That little boy goes to school. He lives a full on life, not because it was great, but because I had a vision for what drew the compassion out of me. Come on, look at me for a minute. Look in these eyes for a minute. Let me go after your soul for a minute. What do you want to create and what it draws? What's the vision? that you're going to bring cure to you're going to bring a healing to what's the hurt you're going to heal in fact this will help you building a brand because the problems you solve will be the problems that you're rewarded the most for is the ones that you solve and you solve things that you're committed to that you care about not intellectually but spiritually emotionally business is a spiritual game when you feel that in your soul you reach beyond what you normally reach for you care more you love more you don't care what other people pay you put your yourself on the line for other people. Don't lose the loving spirit that's inside you. Don't let, come, come on, social media talk you out of it. Don't let your government talk you out of it. Don't let the race wars talk you out of it. Come on, you were created by love. You were created to love. If I can find that inside you and you need to write inside that, what is the thing I got to cure? What's the thing I need to bring healing to? Maybe it's this dyslexia. Maybe it's elderly people that are suffering from dementia. Maybe it's people that don't know how to build a business it does something to you and you want to help them build business scale business maybe it's relationships that are really struggling and you know the pain of that and now you want to take that pain and let it become power to where you can change your ins take your insights and help somebody break through and crash through the limits of the pain the divorce the debt come on the bankruptcy the struggle you say why are you so passionate because on the other end just like you some years back i know what it's like to go through divorce I know what it's like to be a public success and want to end my life privately. I know what it's like to want to medicate, to avoid and escape. I know what it's like to sit and suffer and feel pitiful. And when God said to me, Rex, I'll give you a comeback and beyond, a turnaround that's bigger than what you can do, but you have to give up your pity if you want power. You have to give up your pity if you want power. You can't have both. Which one it be? Your pity will nurse, curse and rehearse everything you've been through. It will remind you of everything you've been through or will you disperse it so I can reverse it? I say that today because there's a you turn. It turns as you turn it. And finally, my last thing to say to you today, my third decision that you need to make today is what will I challenge? What will I challenge? What will I create? What will I cure? And what will I challenge? What will I create? What will I cure? What will I challenge? Look at me for a minute. What will you challenge in your life? Come on, potential is only manifested when it's challenged. I bet if a little poodle chased you today or a little kitty, come on, you wouldn't run too fast. But if a pit bull jumped on there and started running after you, I bet we'd find a whole new capability of what's possible with you. Come on, even if you hadn't worked out, come on, in your Lululemon pants for the last nine months, come on, all of a sudden an Olympic runner might jump out of you. Come on, because you don't want to get eaten by the freaking pit bull. 
something changes when you decide to challenge it. Because most of the things that we complain about, they exist with our permission. And we've been taught to blame. We blame events for the way things are. We blame other people, but blaming leaves you in a place, a powerless place where you suffer and it doesn't give you your future. It only anchors you to everything negative of the past. It makes you a prisoner of what's happened, a product of it, but a prisoner of it. But it's amazing when you give up blaming and you decide, hey, I'm going to challenge this. Intolerance of your present will give you your future. Let me say that again. Intolerance, when you get to the place of, I'm done being broke, I'm not gonna be broke anymore. I'm tired of being emotionally eating, emotionally spending. I'm tired of one night stands. I want real relationship. I'm tired of being distant to God. And if God seems far away, guess who moved? Come on, God's not looking for weekend visitation. He likes full custody in the relationship. Why? Because he can do more through your surrender than he can through your complaining. Powerful, come on. What it, for you, what is the intolerance? I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of being in debt. I'm tired of living in emotions of depression. What is the challenge that I must break through? I have to break through right now. I got to challenge it like a David and a Goliath. I got to stand up to this thing. I got to find my stance again, and I got to stand up to this thing that I'm not going to let it beat me. For me at a time in my life, it was suicidal thoughts. For me at a time in my life, it was, man, I failed in this. How could I, I failed in a relationship. How could I ever help any Anybody else in a relationship over 20 years ago that happened how could I ever how could I ever because these thoughts start to play in your mind but it comes a point where you say you know what enough's enough I'm tired of being addicted I'm tired of feeling this way something's got to change today you have areas in your life where you've made a u-turn and that happened because you got to a place a moment a moment come on where you said I'm gonna break the cycle and I'm going to challenge this. I'm gonna challenge what I'm capable of. I'm gonna challenge this mindset. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna allow the strife to continue in my relationships, the bitterness that poisons me. I'm not gonna allow it to continue to eat away at me. And I'm not gonna allow fear to stop me. Someone needs to even say it wherever you are in your room right now, you're in your office, you're in your car, fear will not run 2023 for me. I am, maybe you need to send a divorce letter and write a divorce letter to fear. Fear, I know we've had a relationship and there's a difference between me having you and you having me. As for me and my relationship with you, I may feel your presence, but I'm shutting the door on you and I'm not opening it up today. I'm not gonna allow fear to dictate my decisions, my faith, my courage, my compassion. I'm shutting the door. You've stolen too much from me. I've allowed you. I've tolerated you. And now it's come to an end. My relationship with you, I'm severing once and for all. I'm breaking it. You are going to lose your grip on me because I am going to challenge what I'm capable of. Don't be like the CEO that stood there one time who made your food chain. I was sitting there with him and he goes, I got this great dream. He painted the whole picture. And then he goes, but what if it doesn't work out? And I go, come on, are you gonna allow your fear to talk you out of that dream, that purpose? You've succeeded before, but what if, but what if? It began to peck away. So he settled for the life he had rather than the life he was capable of living. Today, that fear breaks off your mind, that chain's coming off your mind, that fear's breaking off your relationship where love's gonna begin with you, fear's breaking off your business where you're gonna make new decisions about assets and cash flow and expenditures, and you're gonna be able to simplify and be able to create massive, massive results in this time frame. How do I know? Other people have done it. Ideas turn into a belief through reference points. Half of the Fortune 60 companies, uh, top four, Fortune 500 companies, excuse me, over 60% of them happen in a time of downturn. Why? Because big gets small, but small have a chance to get big. Yeah. Wouldn't today be a day that I'm going to plant a seed? I'm going to do something today. I will create. I will cure or cause or care for. Come on. And I'm going to challenge this. This isn't stealing my future. Today's decisions are tomorrow's realities. I love you. I can't wait for this week and what we're going to do. Today's more of a motivational day, but a vision day. And then we're going to get into some real tactical strategies this week that I'll break you through. How many of you in the chat, come on, have got something powerful today? How many of you are ready to do something with life rather than life do something with you? How many of you are ready to get your roar back? Come on. Yeah. How many of you are ready to get your, you've been tamed too long. You've been tamed and conditioned too long. It's time you turn. So good. Bless Thank you, you Rex Crane. Come on. Ah.
All right, you guys. So here's what I want to share with you. I want to literally inject some cash in your life. Who's excited about that? Put a C in the chat, okay? Because money touches everything you love. I'm so tired of people saying it's not all about money. Nobody said it was all about money. If you're interested in making money, nobody said it was all about money. But it does touch everything that you love. So I want to encourage you right now. If you're not in the Facebook group, in the description, there is a link to join the Facebook group. So listen to me quickly. Rex talked about what are you going to cure in your life? What are you going to cure in your life, right? What is that? It's like I wrote down my son's name, my husband's name, my name, and I put myself, I put a little note because while he was talking, I didn't want to stop and start writing. Anybody else like that? Like I didn't want to stop and start thinking. And so I wrote this note for myself so that I could go, okay, where is that next level of standard really in our lives that I'm ready to cure, right? So what is that for you? So here's what the homework is. Every day I'm gonna give you homework to take this deeper. You guys who are in the inner circle, of course you get the best of us, right? You get the best of us. If you wanna up level to VIP, I want you to put VIP, we call it the inner circle, but put VIP so it's easy to see you. In the comment section, our team will go DM you, send you a link, but also you guys could drop it. Uh, I think actually it's uturnvip.com. Uturnvip.com. We're going to switch to VIP in two seconds. So you guys on Zoom, love you, got you. We're going deep. You guys ready to go deep? You guys ready to go deep in, in inner circle and VIP? Yes. Okay. So we're going to go deep. So if you want to upgrade to VIP, go do that now. Tomorrow I'm going to raise the price. Okay, there's always a ton of people who have a delay in their life and they wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow we're gonna talk about money. So of course in VIP, we're gonna go deep in money, right? We're gonna be hot seating, we're gonna be doing all of that. In a second, Ash, or Ash, Rex and I are gonna move into VIP. So if you want VIP, just do it. Go to uturnvip.com. So here's the homework. I want you to go do a video and I want you to do a post because I want you to be uncomfortable and do a video. But I want you to be empathetic. Right? Part of being a great leader is think about the people who are watching. So I don't want a 10 minute video, right? Because it's really tough for people to love you and listen to you for 10 minutes. If you're an entrepreneur, you need to learn something called a hook. And a hook means what's in it for someone else. Okay, what's in it for someone else? Here's the thing, as you cure whatever you need to cure in your life, raise your standard. You're gonna cure something that needs to be, it needs to be evaporated out of your life now. It could be a belief system. It could be you need to leave a relationship that somebody's not committing to you and you're ready for that next level relationship. It could be you're, you're dealing with abuse in your life and it's time to say that's enough. Like I'm not gonna settle for this standard of emotional abuse or physical abuse. It could be that you're, you're saying, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop living without money. I mean, that was one that I made one, one year. I said, I'm gonna stop living without money. I just, I'm, I'm supposed to have it. I like it. I like living a certain way. You know, I was asked yesterday by Kwacha actually, she said, why do you want to go the next level financially? And I said, number one, because of what I can contribute to God's house. True story for me. I said, number one, what I can contribute to God's house. Number two, I said, because AI is coming in, I want to see how far I can get our family for the legacy of my children. And number three is I would like to see what life looks like at that next level. And that's okay. I just really want to see what life looks like at that next level. And that's okay. See, there was a time that I used to make my vision wrong. It wasn't big enough. I need to hook into something bigger. It's not it's such a lie that causes us to not go all in. So here's the homework. I want you to ask yourself, what area of your life do you need to cure? What area of your life do you need to cure? If you're on Instagram, by the way, just send me a DM and somebody will send you the link to the Facebook group, okay? Where do you need to cure an area of your life? I want you to go do a video in the Facebook group. I can't find you anywhere else but the Facebook group. I'm going to give three people $1,000 just for showing up. Why just for showing up and not being the best? Because I found that when I just show up, the best of me starts to come out of me. When I don't show up because I'm worried about not being good enough, or maybe I can't contribute at that level, or whatever the deal is, it just, the lie takes me down. Anybody else feel like that? The lie sometimes takes you down. So instead of us competing against each other on being the best, which you do want to become the best, right? You, it's, I'm, I'm going to tell you, most people don't show up. They don't show up. Look at VIP right now. VIP has 50% of the people in it that actually signed up. Okay, there's a little bit more now than 50%. Congratulations, you turn VIP because that's rare. 
you're a rare bird. Usually it's exactly 50%. Now we've gone a little bit over 50%, right? I would love to see, could you imagine if 80% of the people who upgraded to VIP actually showed up and made this a priority? I'd fall over. I'd be like, oh my gosh, we got a real chance on this planet because vision is the only thing that's your safety from AI totally taking you out is vision. The reason why we don't move fast enough or pivot fast enough or we settle for things that need to be cured in our life and we just, we just say that that's just how it is, is because we don't have a big enough vision. And you see it everywhere. Brendan Burchard talks about it. Grant Cardone talks about it. Tony Robbins talks about it. All these people talk about it in their own language, but they talk about it because they figured a way through. And believe it or not, it's on bigger visions. That's what gets you compelled and ready to go. Okay, so I'm gonna give three people $1,000 in the Facebook group for just showing up. I want you to share what needs to be cured in your life and what will you do about it before tomorrow morning. 9 a.m. California time, we'll be going live again, right? Tomorrow's about money flow. We're gonna break the cycles of money. We're gonna, we're gonna deliver that off your life. We're gonna break the chains both not just mindset, that's a big piece, by the way, undervalued, but mindset's a big piece. But we're gonna break the understanding around money so that you can jump this week. So you can bet the homework tomorrow is gonna have you actually go create cash tomorrow. Some of you guys, that cash might be $20,000. Some of you guys, that cash might be a hundred bucks, right? But nobody should nobody should settle for a day that's like seven bucks, right? Like, let's make some money tomorrow. You guys good with that? Who wants to make some money tomorrow? Put money tomorrow, right? In the comment section, put money tomorrow if you want to make some money tomorrow. So we're going to break that tomorrow. But today you got to be in the Facebook group so that you can do the homework. Suzanne, Faith, our team, they're going to go see who are the people that are just going out there saying, I'm going to cure this in my life. And this is what I'm going to take action on before we start tomorrow. So I want you to show up already feeling confident because you were competent. Okay, so that's all I'm looking for. Looking for action and I'm looking for vision around what needs to be cured. All right, you guys, I'm gonna flip to VIP Instagram. I'm gonna say bye. If you need to get to us on the Facebook group, send me a DM, somebody will take a look for you. I'm gonna say goodbye to you guys right now. Love you, have a great day, see you tomorrow.